Hello, hello. Say hello when you pop on, please, so I can see who's here. It does not show me who is present. Hello, I see people coming on. Say hello when you're here. I figured I would start out by cutting the masks. And when you cut the masks, you have to cut them directly on the line. So what I am using right now is Gina K Masking Magic. And this little tail is so skinny, it's kind of hard to cut out. So I'm going to hope that I don't rip it. And we're going to do some fun coloring and masking today. So, as you can tell, because I'm being super quiet, I am concentrating on cutting the mask. And all that a mask is really is um, low-tack sticky paper so that you can cover up what you've colored if you're going to like ink blend or if you don't want to color on top of your project or something along those lines. Those of you that have popped in, can you say hello so I can make sure that my comments are working? That would be fantastic. Because if my comments aren't working, that's never fun. Oh, goodness gracious. So that was Archie. You guys all know. Must be somebody walking by with a dog. Because that's usually the only time he goes crazy. I haven't seen them yet, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Alright, so we have the little mouse cut out. Well, hello from Wisconsin. How cool is that? So now I am going to cut out the girl and I'm kind of bad with my masking paper I sort of waste it but hey it's not super expensive all right so again with masks you have to cut out directly on the line and then we're gonna get into coloring this girl and making a card um, I'm not ready for Christmas. So the fact that all of these Christmas stamps are coming out, like ourselves included, um, is a little bit rough on me. Not even going to lie. And you walk in the store and there's Halloween and Christmas like next to each other. And oh my gosh, it's just way too much for me to handle. I miss when we had actual, you know, time for Christmas. Um, I understand that people want to make their Christmas cards early. I get it. Sorta. <laughs> Does anybody still send Christmas cards? I know we all pretend that we're making her... I'm not cutting her head off. Um, I know Marianne sends Christmas cards. I, however, I make Christmas cards. That does not mean I send them. It's just what I do for a living. I make cards. <laughs> and then I collect them. I don't do anything with them. Um, 
Oh, Marianne, shortly after our conversation, the uh, person in question sent me an email with the same request. It was the next day. I haven't replied yet, but I'm thinking of plagiarizing your email. Is it really plagiarism if I get permission though? Yeah, you send a million Christmas cards and Thanksgiving cards and Halloween cards. Okay, so now that my masks are cut, I'm going to leave those up there. So this is one of our brand new stamp sets, and it's called Mice Holiday. And um, this just came out last week. <laughs> Denied. <laughs> um, so it says, have a mice holiday. And then it says, may you feel the magic of Christmas today and always. Gifts of time and love are the ingredients of a truly merry Christmas. In the winter, she curls up with a good book and dreams away the cold. So cute little um, sentiments that I made up to put on here. Um, but like I said today, this is not going to be a Christmas card. It's going to be something else entirely. So just you wait and see. Antoinette, are you here? Oh, Annette. Hi, Annette. So we're gonna zoom in and we're going to get started on coloring. Um, I had a dream last night, a nightmare really, um, that somebody stole all my Copic markers except for two of them. Spring under a tree. No, I already have an idea. It's gonna be a fall card because I'm all about the I'm all about it being like the first day of fall and all that stuff. Like that's fine and dandy for me. Um, I'm just not ready for Christmas yet. Like the whole Christmas thing hurts my brain right now. So, so I'm going to start with E triple zero. And I'm going to color in her skin. I have not colored in, oh my gosh, since before we went to Arizona. So it's been a couple weeks since I've colored. And it was about a week before we went to Arizona was the last time I got to color. So how do you feel about them apples? I'm like all over the place today, don't mind me. Seriously all over the place. So what are you guys up to this weekend? What's going on? What's happening? I need my peanut gallery. You're flying home tomorrow? That's good. I was wondering how it was going, but. So I'm going to use E04. And notice I'm using these little tiny brush strokes in order to create a hairline that I can blend out. I'm going to come down around her ear. Gonna come under her chin. We're gonna shade in her nose. Gonna shade in this ear. April, hello. Yeah, what's that happening, hot stuff?
Okay. And then now that I've kind of framed in her face a little bit, I'm gonna come here and put some shadows on her arms. What are you doing this weekend, April? I'm gonna leave a shadow from her skirt on her leg. I'm going to turn this around. Always, always color where your wrist is most comfortable. So I rotate my paper a lot. And a little bit thicker shadow here. Hi, Jen. Hi, Nona. I do love this stamp set. Hey, Linda. Um, the sentiments are all Christmassy. Christmas, nice holiday, Merry Christmas. So it's like she's reading a Christmas story to the mice. It was kind of my idea of the night before Christmas or like what I would be doing at a Christmas party is I would be in the corner reading a book, talking to the mice and not talking to all the people. <laughs> So there's that. <laughs> I think most of us would be doing that, right, Marianne? I know Marianne would. She's my people. We'd be in the corner reading stories to the mice. <sighs> Giving them little treats. You're coming to the Irving one, right? I get to meet you soon. I got to meet Jill at this last expo in Arizona. And Jill Russell that you guys see on here. She's been a sweetie for a long time. Um, I got to meet, well, I got to hang out with Deanna Maddox and um, Amanda Zabel and um, Christina Rudder. That's our Arizona gang. Um, so that was really fun. And now we're getting ready, gearing up to do the Irving Expo. That's going to be an interesting one because we're not staying on site. Yeah. is How close is Irving to Dallas? I mean, isn't it like the burbs? <laughs> Everything is part of Dallas from what I'm given to understand. But my resident Texas expert, Sandy, is not on. So I can't really ask. Jen, are you ready to, uh, or Jenny? I can't remember. Is it, do I call you Jenny? Are you ready to drop some coin in our booth? <laughs> I hear, now this is just rumor, but I hear. Um, so Sandy lives in Rowlett. Jenny, okay. Um, I hear that all the Texas people save up their money for like a long time. Like they totally save up coin and uh, use it for this show. Like y'all are legit about your shopping. Is that true? And I need to move the camera back just a tiny bit. 
because there we go because it's wiggling a lot and I didn't realize it was leaning up against the desk. Yeah, what I'm told is the Texas people. Oh, so it's not too far of a drive. The DFW is only like half an hour. 45 minutes for us. Oh, you are here. Bestie, aren't you driving? <laughs> Don't be texting and driving. I'll beat you, you know that. Speaking of which, Bestie, I got a surprise for you in the mail. I'm so excited. Okay, so this is my third color in my color blend, also what's known as my true color. Go ahead, sing it. Sing the Cindy Lopper. See your true colors shining through. Meta's gonna tag that now and be like, sorry, you're blocked. That's copyrighted material. Her face looks funny right now because it's all like, oh, stopping for gas. Okay, well then you're forgiven. My video keeps cutting out on my computer. I don't know what's up with that. Anyways, I'm not ready for Christmas until Halloween is over. So, I can deal with the Christmas and Thanksgiving stuff at the same time, but I can't deal with the Christmas and Halloween stuff at the same time. So, that's why I'm taking this stamp and turning it into something else entirely. It's not going to be a Christmas stamp. But kind of the joy of this stamp and the way that it was drawn is that you can pretty much make it anything you want it. Like Marianne said, you could make it a little springtime scene. You can make it fall, you can make it Christmas. Just change the foliage around her. But I felt like since it was the beginning of fall that I could go ahead and safely make it. Am I your husband? He can sing for me. He's a good man. <laughs> and now it's an earworm, so it's gonna be stuck in his head. You're welcome. What can I say except you're welcome? Okay, is anybody playing the Disney Dreamlight Village stupid game? Identify yourself. Who else is playing this game? I must know. It is important. So I'm gonna, before I color in with the last color, I'm gonna take R20 and color in her cheeks some. 
Lots of people use different colors on this. I like R20 because it's pink. So it almost makes her cheeks look a little ruddy. Michelle! Michelle, are you playing the Disney Dreamlight Village game? Inquiring minds want to know. And by inquiring minds, I mean myself. Okay. Skin done. Oh, Michelle. Do you have a switch? A Nintendo Switch. I know, and it's a great game too. It's redonkulous. <laughs> well, you're gonna do it again. <laughs> um, and I didn't introduce you to the last game. That was Sandy, so you need to blame her. Sandy introduced you to the dinosaur Jurassic World scenario. Me? Um, I had a couple people contact me and say, oh my gosh, I know what a Disney fanatic you are. This is, you know, a good, a good one for you. And since Animal Crossing kind of left us hanging and decided they weren't going to do any more updates or anything like that, um, my son and I got this game. And so it's called Disney Dreamlight Village. And it's kind of like an Animal Crossing-ish style scenario. But it's Disney. And it's Disney done well. It's not, it's not one of their funky, you know, when they release things like they go running off half cocked scenario. I can't handle it. Well, this is not that way. It is full on for real Disney. Um, castles and magical things and redonkulous stupid good stuff it's stupid good so um i've been playing at night and i like it because it um gives you quests to do like in animal crossing there was certain things that you know that you should do or that you could do um but in this game there's actual like quests and you need to complete them in order to sort of progress through the game and move on. Um, but it's also open-ended enough that you don't like necessarily have to do the specific things. Like you don't have to do them at a specific time, I guess. So you can just go and garden or hang out and go fishing or you know whatever fishing is considerably harder than it is in animal crossing um a little more challenging which i think is really cool and i'm down with hey joy about time my peanut gallery got here um it's just a fun game i just i i really really like it and i love that it's Disney and it's it's cool um the little critters in it you can like feed the critters and they'll become your friends so like I've been feeding the squirrels and now all the squirrels follow me around super cute and the squirrels are all the different squirrels from sword in the stone so they have that cute little weird 
<laughs> squirrel scenario <laughs> going on. Um, I cannot wait till I get to the part. Um, I know, Michelle. Um, I cannot wait. One of the one of the things is is that you can feed the raccoons. And the raccoon's favorite food is blueberries. So I'm really excited to get over there so I can feed the raccoons. Um, but anyways. And then this little mouse reminds me that, um, so I unlocked the Remy character. And I helped Remy in his restaurant. <laughs> and then I invited him to my village to open up a restaurant. <laughs> I know, and it's really cute to feed the critters. They're really cute. And I love when I go out of the front door of my house and all the little squirrels come running over. It's kind of adorable. Like I could spend a whole day in the game just feeding all the critters. And they have different things that they like, like the little bunny rabbits. You have to like chase them a couple of times. They play, you know, like cat and mouse kind of. The raccoons do too, but the bunny rabbits, and then you have, and then you feed them carrots. And the squirrels um, really like apples, which I think is adorable. And then, yeah, you get to cook like you do in Animal Crossing. You get to garden like you do in Animal Crossing. Um, you get to mine. Hey, Milligan. Um, all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna start by coloring her shoes. I don't know why people try to call me when I'm doing a live. So rude. Anyways, I'm gonna give her a little black Mary Jane shoes here. So I'm gonna start with 100. Anyways, it's a really cute game and I highly recommend it. Um, right now it's in the beta version, so it's not like the fully released version. So there's only so far you can get in it. Um, and there's a couple little glitches and stuff. <laughs> Was it you, Michelle? What the hell? <laughs> uh, yay, Milligan. I'm glad you caught me live too. Um, so there's a couple little glitches. So you have to, you know, make sure you're saving your game regularly and that stuff because I have had it, you know, like shut down on me. Um, so just be forewarned that they have released it in like a beta scenario, but I'm okay with that. I'm completely fine with that. Right? And Michelle, so far there's no in-game purchases. So once you spend the initial money on the game, and you can choose what level you want to spend on the game to get exclusive stuff. And I think it's cross-platform. I mean, I know that you can play on PC. And I know that you can play on Switch. All right, guys, now we're gonna start making some decisions. So, do you want me to show you what I'm doing so you guys can help me make decisions? Um, Milligan, we're talking about Disney Dreamlight Magic or Disney Dreamlight Kingdom or something like that. Can't listen in El Paso. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's all right, I will be here. <laughs> It's called Disney Dreamlight Magic, and it's freaking amazing. It's stupid cute. It's so stinking cute. Okay, so I'll show you guys what I'm doing. So I found all of these leaves in my stash. Some of these are wooden. Um, so I have some, some wooden ones, and then some of these are like mulberry paper. So I want to use some of these leaves. Um, and then I have this really cool paper pack from Authentique. You guys know how much I love Authentique. Um, so it's called the Splendor Bundle and has all of these cute papers in there. Um, it's 
so yeah. Then I have this piece of wooden paper or wood grain, wood looking paper. And so I thought putting all of those together would make a super cute fall card. There is some old school Disney stuff like your, the first person you meet is Merlin. So, um, um, Jenny, you think that I am like super, super duper good at coloring, right? <laughs> I don't know if I could make that happen, but I was planning on putting a tree here or a tree trunk here and then using oxide inks to um, gradiate the background to do a background there for her and her little mouse. So um, I need to pick colors. So I'm gonna color the book while you guys decide what color her hair and her dress should be. So anyways, I highly suggest the game. Y'all should play it. It's really cute. Yes, Sword in the Stone Merlin. And all of the, the squirrels that I was talking about that I feed all the squirrels, it's all the squirrels from Sword in the Stone. I know, Milligan. It's stinking cute. Um, Golden Auburn. Wow, Nona. Like, throw down the gauntlet on that one, right? Golden Auburn. Okay. All right, I like a challenge. I'm gonna do it. Dark hair, dark brown hair, red dress. <laughs> um, and then it goes all the way through like I just met Kristoff. Um, and then I um, met Donald Duck. And so there's like Goofy and Mickey when you first start off and Merlin. And then, um, mahogany hair. Ooh, that's like a burgundy. Well, Nona wants golden auburn, so we're gonna go a little golden auburn. We're gonna do some, we're gonna do some, some of this craziness that Nona's asking for. Because apparently y'all think I'm on my game today. Um, Disney Dreamlight, Disney Dreamlight, Disney Dreamlight Village, Kingdom, something, I don't know. I'm the Merlin of Copics. Is that why I have nightmares that people steal my Copics? So my nightmare was that I was teaching a class and I didn't realize that I had two classes scheduled at the same time. Um, well, not necessarily at the same time. So one was supposed to be over and then the other one started right away, but they were in two very different places. So I was trying to figure out how to get from one place to the other. And so I was like 15 or 20 minutes late to the class. And so, and then the class was outside. Um, and it started raining. And so it was like, we can't host the class outside because you can't color in the rain. Like the paper's gonna get all wet. So it was super duper concerned. And so we moved inside um, and the people who run the expo were there and um, they said that um, I could use this specific room. And so it was like, okay, cool. And so 
um, I went, we went in and we were setting up and there was this one girl there that, um, hadn't colored before and she, um, was looking at my markers, started like looking at them and I was totally fine with that. And I was setting up the projector and, you know, getting everything done and, I was, you know, frantic because I was so late and, um, <sighs> Tammy, <laughs> it's not flicking. That's why. Um, and so anyways, then she gets up and she was like, I'm mad that you're late and I can't see the screen and this is dumb. And she walks out and I realized that she was walking out with like my markers. And I thought that she had like a couple of them. And I was like, hey, wait, you have my markers. You can't leave with those. And then she took off. And when I came back to like, look, and I told the people, the expo people and everything, I was like, she left with my markers. And so they were trying to chase her down and I came back and I looked and I only had two markers left. And so I was like super duper upset because how can I teach a class with only two markers? Um, and I'm starting a new job. Switch Xbox PC. Can you play it on the iPad? I just want to know. Can you play it on the iPad? Um, so anyway, so I'm like super upset that she, you know, has run off with my markers and one of the girls from the expo goes and she, um, buys me a whole bunch of markers, like this whole bag fistful of markers because people really wanted to take the class. So she buys me this whole bag of markers and she brings it to me and I didn't want to be like rude. And I was like, oh my gosh, you shouldn't do that. It's fine. We'll figure it out. Um, oh my gosh, Sandy, no way. It's not on Amazon. Apple store is not yet. Okay. Um, it's, it's on switch. I know it's on switch and PC. Um, I did not know that it was on Xbox and PlayStation. So anyways, my son has it on, we have it on our switches. Um, so this girl brings me this whole bag of markers and I didn't want to like tell her, but like two thirds of them were just refills. They like weren't actually markers. So she was like, yeah, I just spent like three grand on markers. And I was like, oh my God, you got had, um, because it wasn't like the whole set, you know? And so, yeah, it was just really concerning. It was very concerning and scary <laughs> that somebody stole all my markers. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I dream about. How about y'all? <laughs> Don't you worry, Nona. The red's coming. See this RO2? We're gonna add some red hint to this to make it more of that strawberry color that I think you're looking for. A little more auburn there. Ah, there's a fly buzzing my head. There we go, now it's Auburn. Super cute, super cute. All right. I don't know if you guys know, just because I'm moving this out of the way to put markers, but I use my candy cup and I use my Crazy Creations glitter and I use this little spoon and it's the perfect little spoon rest so that you can spoon glitter over the top of your flowers. So just as an FYI, it's a really, really great idea to um, put your little spoon in there as a little spoon rest. 
Anyways, for utilizing my husband's phone to look up a game. <laughs> well, you can't use your phone, obviously. Um, you're watching something. It's important. So where did we land on the color for the dress? I almost want to do like a yellow, but is that too similar to her hair? There's no real green in this paper. There's a little bit of teal, like a dark teal. I got Subway and they asked if I wanted a bag for 11 cents. Uh, that's a hard pass on that was sitting in front of me, not in use. I mean, you were just using your surroundings. Navy. Yeah, but I colored her dress dark on um, the package. See, this is what her dress looks like dark on the package. Mushroom gray. Now that's kind of a cool idea. Let's roll with that. I like it. Mm. All right, mushroom gray, here we go. Holy shiitakes, I'm coloring it gray. Way to be out of the box. So do you guys like this time slot? Like two or three in the afternoon? Does that work for y'all on the weekends? I thought it was a good time. Trying to find the sweet spot of when everyone's available. I mean, I know it's subject to change depending on what's going on, but. Linda likes it. Milligan likes it. Nona likes it. Joy likes it. Well, that's good then. Joy, is that song from this morning stuck in your brain? You're welcome. What can I say except you're welcome? I love the ting tings. It just, I was on the treadmill and I was rocking out and I was like, you know who needs to hear this song? Joy needs to hear this song. Now Sandy's going to play it in her car because she has it on her Spotify. I don't have Spotify because I don't like paying for my music subscription. I just use Amazon Prime Music. There's just so much free music out there, I, and I pay for Amazon Prime anyways. I don't want to have to pay for music. No, I did not, Milligan. New no, ma'am. Just doing the afternoon. All right.
So with your stamps, if you use your imagination, they can be things that are other than what the stamp was intended for. So obviously this is with our Christmas release. It's intended to be a Christmas stamp. However, this really honestly could be any time of year. Put her out underneath a tree or sitting on her bed or wherever and make it any time of year that you want. And that's what we try really hard to do at Sweet Sentiment Stamps is to make things. Yes, joy, and we gotta share. Um, nope, you didn't miss anything. Um, anyway, so then you can just make it any time of year that you want. Do whatever it is. We want them, we know that, you know, if you have to invest in, in stamps and especially with the economy being the way it is, you might not be able to buy all the things. We want you to get stuff that is really going to be versatile and work well for you. So, um, thus the little mouse and the girl reading to the mouse, they don't really have like a, you know, other than the sentiments are Christmassy. They don't really have a, ooh, this one's a little dark. I don't want to go quite that dark. There we go. So you could put her with like a happy birthday sentiment or a thinking of you sentiment. Anything that tickles your fancy. This is actually cute, Jenny. Thank you for the suggestion of the gray dress. Now the last color I'm gonna use then is my W1. And this color is gonna push all the other colors out of the way. So I'm gonna use it to kind of make some pleats in her dress to work on those highlights and really bring them forward. How about the trim colors? What color do you want the trim to be? Now I think we could go with that like olive green, maybe just cause it's a little bit subtle. Um, oh joy, it's been way longer than a week for me. Way longer. We're talking, I'm working on three or four weeks where I haven't colored, so. Um, purple? There's no purple in the papers. That's the problem. I have with purple. It should almost be yellow. Burnt orange. I like burnt orange or green. 
Okay. Um, we're going to do both burnt orange and green. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do both burnt orange. So how do you like them apples? So we're going to start with green. Green is going to be the edges of her dress and then her bow is going to be orange. Ooh, I almost just colored that bow green. See, Nona and I were on the same page. I'm gonna do her little hair tie too. Do any of y'all dress up for Halloween? Okay. Burnt orange. And it's such a small bow that I'm not gonna do um, a full color spectrum. I'm just going to do three. <laughs> it's not all about that. <laughs> Jenny, I don't care if you spend a dime. I'm just excited to meet you. No, but I'm going to, oh, you're going to live for work. What are you going to be? I just hear it's like this thing in Texas is that everybody saves up for these shows and then goes crazy and I think that's wild but some people really do because I mean it is their vacation or their you know whatever so I mean not putting it down Ursula Ursula is in that Disney game Yeah, I'm just excited to meet you. That's all I care about. This was a good call, friends. Yeah, Sandy does. <laughs> um... Yeah, Sandy was talking about the GASE um, and how people save like crazy for that, too. I'm just excited. I think that we're going to have so much fun, and I'm sp staying a couple extra days at Sandy's house. Sandy, maybe we should hit up Carol and go back over there so we can... Um, Kind of plan things out again now that we know what we're doing with the retreat. Just saying. Oh, look at how cute and fall that looks. I like it. 
Good call, everyone. Um, then Michelle, hello. Eat at the retreat house and spend a full weekend together. Yeah, right, Jenny, exactly. Um, we'll see, Milligan. I'm going to help you get that switch out. We're going to... We're going to play some Disney, whatever the heck it's called, Dreamlight. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these masks. Haha, -ha, we're going to take off our masks. I'm very paranoid that one a person in my house is going to microwave something because it always kicks my video off. I don't know what it is about our microwave. I'm telling you, don't buy LG products. All of our LG products in our kitchen suck. So terrible. They all break and are stupid. I know. What switch do you have? Do you have like the big cool one? Or are you economical like me and have the little switch light? I have the switch light because it's um, teal. <laughs> Although I feel like I should have just got the big switch. But what happened was, is Evan wanted to switch. And so he got the switch light because he was trying to be economical. And then he had it for like a week. And then he was like, yeah, I need the big switch. Yeah, I hand cut these at the beginning of the video. Okay, so the best way to put on a mask is to turn this over and then use your espresso to make sure that you have full, even adhesion. Oh, lucky you. So yeah, so I ended up getting the little switch, which is fine, it's fine for me. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a tree trunk here, um, just kind of up the side, and then we're going to gradate the bottom. I'm also going to draw like a um, little hill that they're sitting on. So I'm going to start with tree trunk, and again, as I'm totally, I know the tail is teeny tiny, and the mice on here, this is the biggest mouse. Look at this teeny tiny little baby mouse. Look at how tiny he is. So there's big, medium, and small. <laughs> Unless you kill my ethernet switch. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna use E41. And I sometimes draw my trees upside down because I want him to be on a tree root. And just the way the way my mind does this. I think I'm pretty happy with that. This one to come out like that. Okay, something along those lines. Twenty eighteen was a we. <laughs> Oh my gosh, the N64s were amazing. <laughs> Mario Kart all the time, right, April? Okay, so now I'm gonna grab some colors. I think I'm gonna start with 5.9. This is Walnut, and I'm gonna add kind of like an eye right here. Okay, so I don't know if I've told y'all, but near our house, we have this gas station. And 
this gas station. <laughs> I know it sounds weird. Just bear with me. Um, this gas station has the best food. And so my parents, they live fairly close to us within a couple miles. And they had never eaten anything from this gas station. And so we were like, okay, we're going to take you to lunch at the gas station. Um, all right. Bye, Joy. And so we're like, we're going to take you to lunch at the gas station. That's what we're going to do. And they're like, that's just super weird. And I'm like, I get it. And I understand. But our gas station, and you can ask Sandy. I've had her eat at the gas station too. Our gas station has this big smoker in it. And they smoke local meats. And my parents love Reuben sandwiches. Well, they make corned beef there, like smoked. And it's crazy how good the food is there. I hate Reuben sandwiches, by the way. That is not, that is not my cup of tea. But anyways, so my parents are like, yeah, 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 we'll come out and we'll go to the gas station for lunch. And I wish my mom was on right now because, of course, they did not have Rubens. Oh, no, Jenny, you should go out and come back in. Of course, they didn't have Rubens today because, you know, why would they have that when you want it? But um, they had pulled pork and burgers, and they have the best onion rings. Oh, my God. They're like diner onion rings. They're not like fast food onion rings. And um, they have really good seasoned fries. And then of course it's Idaho, so fry sauce is a thing. Um, and hi. Yeah, we do eat a Bucky's. <laughs> right, Jenny? So they have, um, so we got, onion rings and pulled pork sandwiches and it's um and it's all smoked and it's all local so it's just it's fresh and it's good it's amazing and my parents went on and on and on they were like oh my gosh this is like one of the best sandwiches I've ever had it's so good so now my parents are all like yeah we want to go to the gas station for lunch for those of you that came to my birthday retreat, when I had my birthday retreat, we had, um, oh my gosh, really? Texas has all the cool stuff. Um, we, uh, at the, at my birthday retreat, we had, um, breakfast burritos from this same gas station. Like I called them ahead and ordered a whole bunch of breakfast burritos for the retreat. And um, they made them all, you know, fresh right then and there. And then we took them hot to the retreat. And everybody just raved over them. And then we had bought so many that we had them actually two days in a row. Um, Tyler and Cameron took them up to their room and put them in the refrigerator. And then we brought them down the next day and they heated them up. The hotel heated them up and oh my God, they were just as good the next day. But the breakfast burritos had egg and cheese and um, pulled pork and um, what the heck else? Oh, smoked bacon and um, potatoes, because I mean, we're in Idaho, so we have to do potatoes. But man, oh man, do you remember having them, April? I was surprised by all the smokers outside gas stations and grocery stores, smoked chilies. Yeah, right, April? They were so good. Yep. See, when you come and visit me next time, April, I'll take you and we'll get their pulled pork sandwich or, so they have like this, 
menu um, that they put out online. And so it lets you know what they're making every day. And so like Monday is rib day and oh my gosh, yeah. It's so awesome. And they have super good coleslaw and beans. And yeah, they're just amazing. So it sounds funny to be like, yeah, let's go eat at a gas station. But let me tell you. And this gas station has like the best supply of like drinks and stuff ever. Like they have all the good stuff there. Look at how cool that tree looks. I like it. I think it's awesome. Um, Diana, I am in just outside of Boise. I'm in Nampa. Uh, yeah, April, I promise you can come stay with me and we'll craft and eat <laughs> and then we'll craft some more and then we'll eat some more. <laughs> it's no longer a gas station. They took out the pumps. Well, that's rude of them. <laughs> I hate when they get rid of the thing that made them like kitschy to begin with. Yeah, it's super cool. So I'm just going to outline the little hill. And start blending down. So having the mask here really, really, really helps in this scenario because you don't have to worry about staying outside of your little drawing, coloring. You can just go right over it. Okay. And then I'm going to blend the opposite direction because as things get closer to you. Oh, really? Where at? As things get closer to you, the darker they get. So we're going to start with our dark color. We're gonna come up from the bottom. I usually always trim the outsides of these anyways, so. Try not to make it even because it's grass, so I don't really want it to be perfectly even. Do you know what town in Idaho she lives in? Most people, when they live in Idaho, they live up north. So they all live in like Sandpoint or Coeur d'Alene, all those types of places. Very posh ski resorts and stuff. My uncle lives up there and he gets tons and tons of snow. We do not live up there and we do not get tons of snow. Just saying. We live in Southwest Idaho. Near BYU, yeah. Up north. Don't use your husband's phone to look that up. By the way, you might get in trouble. So I always, when it's like fall colors, I like to add a little bit of the YG to the grass because um, things are starting to turn yellow and I feel like this adds that little bit of dimension to it and then I tone that back down with my YG 63 just enough And then we're gonna come back at it with this G82, Rexburg, that's right. Yeah, that's not near us. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Now some funsies. Are you guys ready? Oh, really? <laughs> April, Utah gets really cold. <laughs> Of course, the part of Utah you're in, probably not so much, but northern Utah gets really cold. All right, so I'm going to grab some oxiding color, so give me just a minute. Fossilized amber, I think, is going to be a thing. I'm going to use... I want some oranges, so I'm going to go into probably Rusty Hinge. I haven't used that one for a long time. And then Crackling Campfire. And then Aged Mahogany. So I need to find my Rusty Hinge brush. There it is. Okay, so yes, I have the names written. I know, right? Desert, baby. <laughs> so I have the names written on all of my brushes. So I'm going to start with the lightest, and I actually want one more color because I want it to be a little bit lighter down at the bottom. So I'm gonna go Scattered Straw. There it is. Okay. So, so I'm going to start with scattered straw. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love doing this. Ready? So I'm not worried about it mixing so much with the, oh, I probably need to be like more on screen. There, is that better? I'm not worried about it mixing so much here. So I'm gonna go just kind of light. Next color, start really light on the pressure and then increase. How cool is that? Ready to move on? I was, um, I'm originally from Northern California, so I'm loving Idaho. We have been here in Idaho for about 16 years now. Okay, now one of the tips to blending is to go in and do layers. So I always go backwards on my brushes to get that nice smooth transition. So then I'll leave my rusty hinge brush out as I grab my crackling campfire. I grab my crackling campfire. Again, starting with light pressure, then increasing. And then see how you have that line? So if you come back in with a little bit of the previous ink, you can fix that 
and make it nice and smooth. See, nice and smooth. Okay, so after a crackling campfire, I have aged mahogany and this will be really dark. Just north of LA. Yeah, agreed. I'm from way up north though, way Northern California. North of the vineyard, south of the redwoods. And then I just work myself back down my color spectrum here. Look at how cool. I love it. Okay. So, I'm gonna move these over. Stack these up. And now, my favorite part. My claim to fame is the 1994 earthquake broke our freeway. Britney Spears' sister got pregnant there. And if you are a Netflixer and into zombies, Santa Clarita diet. We've been in Santa Clarita. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, you've been to the Redwoods. We've been in Southwest Utah for two and a half years. Yeah, I remember when you moved. I am surprised by the number of people who move here and then complain about our LDS neighbors. Uh, hello. <laughs> yeah, they've been there a long time. Utah's their place. <laughs> right? Um, I think what people don't expect is the number of LDS people that are here in Idaho because we just, we're like a bedroom community for Utah. Okay, are you ready? Oh, look at how cute. Now, I save my masks because I figure at some point I'm going to use them again. So I just stick them to the front of the acetate on the stamp set. And then that way I don't have to cut them again. I can use them several times. Okay, are you guys ready? Oh, look at how cute. Okay. Now we realize her glasses are, that's not going to work for me. So. This is where I pull out my, I know, right? Ta-da! Which is short for da-da-da-da. Milligan, you're as far south as you can go. Are you Florida? My Rabbit Hole Designs Bitty Blending Brush, and I'm gonna grab my ink wherever I put it. And I'm gonna start with Scattered Straw. And I'm gonna use a little bit of fossilized amber. Gonna grab a little bit of rusty hinge. Okay. 
And yes, I'm always this anal retentive about my cards. Perfect. Here in San Diego, that's not as far south as you can get. I mean, as far south as in California, I suppose. I used to live in San Clemente. I went to college there. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, where is it? Point three. And I'm going to re- When you put the oxides over black, they fade it out. So. Just adding a little bit of black there, okay? So now, we can make this into a card. So, I'm gonna start with my card base. And I'm gonna clean up my oxide inks here. This is um, Copic ink, so I'm not worried about it going anywhere. Okay. Then, I'm gonna grab my paper, and I'm gonna grab my little paper trimmer. So this card base is five and a half by five and a half. And you guys know me, I like to cut everything just a little bit smaller. So this will be five and three eighths. Five, five. Ooh, I don't like that corner. And three eighths. Okay. So this is where I'm gonna start. Set that off to the side. Thanks, Cheryl. Then I'm gonna decide what papers I wanna use. So I'm gonna set this here and I definitely wanna use this yellow polka dot paper. It just makes me happy. And that's too similar to the wood. Kinda like that. That, oh, I really like this. Um, oh, I like these polka dots. I'm gonna use these polka dots. Oh my gosh, I'm such a polka dot person. Don't even with me. I don't even wanna hear it, y'all. I'm just a polka dot person and that's just how this is gonna be. So, like I said, I go through all that coloring and all that work and then I end up trimming this down. Groovy. I'm going to put a sentiment here and I still have those leaves. So then this, their paper's a little bit wonky. So I'm going to trim that off. And then, thanks guys. I'm going to cut this to three by five and three eighths. So this is going to go like this. Nope, I lied. I'm going to cut it by two, five and a quarter. There we go. So this is going to go like this. Perfect. And then this one. Is going to be. Two. And this is also going to be five and a quarter. Okay. Now I usually save these little scraps because I put them on the inside of the card. And I'll probably do that with this wood grain too. So I'll cut off a little piece of this and use that for the inside of the card. Okay. Then 
another round of oxide inks. I'm going to use this great brown that is called Ground Espresso. It's like my favorite brown to use. Um, um, not yet, but they will. Like Animal Crossing, you will be able to connect um, with other players and visit, from what I understand. Right now, it's all conjecture because people are just, you know, trying to read the code. But for now, I don't care because it occupies me enough that it doesn't matter to me if I get to play with other people. Now, later, once I, you know, complete all the quests and do all the stuff, then yeah, I'll want to play with other people. When I first looked at that, I thought you were saying something about SoCal because you said SoCal. <laughs> Thought you were like, SoCal all the way. And I was like, you rock on with your bad self. I was just talking about um, today, I worked at a Starbucks on Camino de Estrella in San Clemente and there was no surface streets that get you from San Clemente. Um, so from San Onfre to Camino de Estrella. Diana, you are? I play Animal Crossing too, babe. You gotta come see the island. We gotta be friends. Um, if you look in the feed, you'll have my my friend code is in the feed somewhere. You just like type in the search word Animal Crossing and it'll pop up. Um, anyways, so you have to take I-5 because there's literally zero surface streets from Camino de Estrella to San Onfre. And so I was talking about, I mean, Milligan, you probably know, that's probably like six or eight miles. We're not talking a very far commute. But since you have to get on I-5, and I worked at Starbucks, so I was always at work at like stupid o'clock in the morning. Um, it, even at like 4.35 o'clock, see, there you go. Even at like 4.35 o'clock in the morning, it took like a half an hour to get to work because you have to drive on I-5. And you're only driving like eight miles, but you had to be on I-5. There was no other way to get there. It was redonkulous. So, and I was talking about, because I, since I worked at the Starbucks, the... Um, I was talking about a lady that used to come in. She was like probably in her 70s, but she looked like she was 40 because she had so much work done. And she would work. Yep, the five. You know it, baby. Um, she had so much work done. And so she would, um, she would come in and there was a 24-hour fitness that was like across the parking lot. And she would come in like super early in the morning Um probably like 6.30 or 7-ish or something like that. And she always had her hair done perfectly and her makeup done perfectly and in her fancy little sports car. And she had just come from the gym, so we all knew she wasn't, like, working out because, you know, your makeup doesn't stay on like that if you're actually working out. And um, she would have everything just done just oh so perfectly. And then she would order the strangest coffee um she would order a grande half soy half regular half calf black and white mocha right i'm like chick make up your mind yo because everything is literally like half and half. And it makes no sense to me to order half soy and half cow's milk. Um, it was beyond me. And then since it was a grande, there was three shots. So, you know, you're trying to do half regular and half decaf. And then the... Uh, 
the, um, all of it. I don't know. It still baffles me, as you can tell. Absolutely ridiculous. So there you go. Now you know. I did have a lot of fun working at Starbucks, though. It was one of my favorite jobs ever. So I like to pull out random strings because I feel like it adds texture and I feel like it makes the stuff look less manufactured. Highway systems technically should all be numbered the same and I can't remember which direction it is. But the interstate highways north south is um, ends in odd numbers or even numbers. I forget which way it is. And then um, east west is the opposite, is even numbers. See, look at how cute that's going to be. Mm -hmm. I love making cards with y'all. Are you guys with me still? Barely Art Glue is in stock. So if y'all need it, we have it. We are your glue hookup. For sure. Okay. I'll take your word for it. I can't remember. Not something I committed to memory. <sighs> now the cool part with Barely Art Glue is I can literally put this everywhere because it dries invisible. So it doesn't matter to me. And I just hold it down for a second so that it can grab hold. Oh, really? There you go. That's all Southern California stuff, so I'm not super familiar with it. Like, I know of it, but I don't, like, yeah. Not super duper familiar with it. I'm starting to learn the highway systems. Oh my gosh, Diana, it's the best glue on the face of the planet. Literally the best. And so then I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna use my espresso and just make sure that everything is adhered. Okay, and when these dry, these will disappear. <gasps> Ooh, what I could do is put glitter on them, but I don't think I'm going to. Okay. So I want this to be kind of over a little bit. I like all the textures, so I want this to be around here. So I'm gonna pull out a little honey bowl that has my sweet pops in it. I overfilled my glue, so I'm gonna put the pin in it. Oh my gosh, Jenny. If that's the one thing you buy from our booth, I want it to be barely art glue. Um, 
the difference between art, glitter glue, and barely art is incredible, especially where you are with the humidity. And art glitter glue tends to get clumpy and um, you're constantly trying to unclog it with the pin. And there is a certain amount of like cornstarch in the art glitter glue that um, is actually a binder. I know everybody has so much glue. I promise this glue is the last glue you'll ever buy. Um, and so it actually, cornstarch, anybody who bakes knows or cooks knows that cornstarch is a binder. And so anything, any foreign object that gets in your glue gets bound and that starts to clog up your glue. So um, art glitter glue is like the rose art crayons. <laughs> you know the difference between rose art crayons and Crayola crayons? <laughs> Our glitter glue is now like the rose art, and it's expensive. It's more expensive, and I'm not a fan of that. Again, flip this over and adhere all those sweet pops. Well, hello, Meg. How are you? So now I'm gonna grab some of these leaves. There's a little tiny critter in the bottom here. <laughs> so these are the wooden ones, and then these are the other ones. So I'm just gonna take a few and we're gonna glue them on. Ooh, I like that side. I know, right? You'll have to watch the replay. I'm almost done, I'm just decorating now. And then I think one more. Oh, yep, I'm gonna put it just like that. Okay, now we're gonna grab a couple of these ones. Oh my gosh. Milligan, knock that off. You need to use some Barely Art glue. That huge tape runner is so gone. So, so gone. Time's the past. I never could use that thing. It made me exceedingly cranky. It was not my jam, for sure. I do not know where I got these leaves at. Thanks, Kathy. Oh my goodness, it's been a long time for you, huh? Okay. And then I'm gonna add these ones down here. Hmm, maybe not. Okay. Now I'm gonna grab a ribbon off of my special little ribbon machine. I think I'm gonna do this dark green one. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do my double looped bows. So pinch the ribbon between my thumb and middle finger. And I wanna make this bow a little bit larger, so I'm gonna pull my fingers apart. And I'm gonna do one figure eight, 
and then two figure eights. I'm gonna cut off a tail of this so I have some to work with. I'm gonna put it down between this V, which makes a loop, and I'm gonna pull that in that loop, maybe. See how dexterous I am today. Yeah, I can't do the ATG guns. I don't have that kind of coordination, April. And then you have a perfect little bow. And I'm gonna take my little bow and I'm gonna put it right in the middle there. And I'm also gonna trim these because I didn't like how they looked above the bow. So now when I put the bow there, it'll mask all of that. Okay. And there's our little card. I still think that I need something extra because you know me, I gotta be extra. So I have all these cute little beads from the ton. I have black and I have these multicolor ones and I have these clear ones. So I think I'm gonna use the clear. And Linda Lou. If you'd been a picture farmer for years, <laughs> Linda loves my bows. So I had to make Linda a bunch of bows. She ordered a bag of bows. So I made her a bag of bows. So if any of you want me to tie a bunch of bows for you, you just let me know because I can sit on the couch and tie a bunch of bows for you. And then when that glue dries, these will be completely clear, which is super duper awesome. I cannot get this one to bend or to flip over. There we go. Hmm. I want this size. All right. Oh, the bow stuck to my finger. Yes, I should use my tools, right? Yes, it is. Crystal katana. Framer, not farmer. All right. Oh, really? I need a new one. <laughs> Mine lost its sticky. And there you go, guys. There it is, a cute little fall card. So, I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. And I will see you back here tomorrow. Um, tomorrow I will be doing something else I'm not sure but um, probably something else from the new release and um, 
yeah. So same bat channel, same bat place. I'm thinking the three o'clock mountain time is the way to go. Is that what you guys like? And if that is, then that's what we'll do. Um, I will post this video to YouTube um, when I get a chance. But for now, I think I'm gonna go hang out with my husband and play some more um, Disney Kingdom, whatever it is. Disney Dreamer Kingdom. Do 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 do. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> so, anyways, thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate it. And I will see you all very, very soon. Toodles!